Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to our third St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. It's glad to have you all here tonight. We delayed the start of the ceremonies just about 10 minutes and made sure that the Masters ended because we didn't want to give you our own version of Heidi Bowl. So we made sure that Phil was able to win that one for you. I'm Chris Kerber, glad to be here. Uh, one, one of the things that has made this neat, I was asked to do this the last couple of years and every single time around, it's proven to be better and better and better. First off, it gets a little bigger. Uh, it's great to see the families of the inductees. It's great to see the previous inductees here with their families supporting it. And you continue to see new faces. So as this continues to grow, you really start to gain an even greater appreciation for just the amount of hard work that has gone unnoticed for far too long in the city of St. Louis. So a, a really neat event coming your way. We're going to introduce you to all the inductees. I do want to start, though, with something a little off the beaten path, if that's okay with you. Blue season ended yesterday, as uh, most of you may not know. Cardinals are about to have their home opener. So uh, this morning I was on the phone with a buddy of mine, and we ended up in a pretty good argument about sports fans. And, uh, and I gave him my two cents. I, I, every now and then I have an opinion of my own. Some of you may know. So... We were arguing, and I said, listen, it's hands down that hockey fans are the smartest, most educated sports fans there are out there. I mean, it's, it's not even close. It's just, I mean, research shows this. Well, he's trying to argue about the baseball fans. I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do a test tonight. I'm going to prove to you that the hockey fans are the smartest ones out there. I've got a perfect, absolute target audience here. It's going to be 500 hockey people that will be here tonight. So I'm going to do this little quick test here, and I want to just do this litmus test so I can call them back after the program and prove to them I was right. It's just a real quick question of an IQ test. You all okay with that? Okay. See, that's what I thought. I thought everybody would be willing to. All right. Now follow me on this. All right. A mute. Not yet. We can't answer that. This guy's an overachiever. All right. <laughs> A mute goes, in, a mute goes into the, the drugstore and needs to buy a toothbrush. Okay? By imitating the action of using the toothbrush, the shopkeeper looked at him and knew exactly what he needed, gave him the toothbrush, and the sale was done. Now, right behind him, a blind man walks into the same store, and he needs to buy a pair of sunglasses. All right, now, think about this. All right? How does he express himself to the shopkeeper to tell him he needs to buy the sunglasses? Let me see it. Okay, if it's okay with most of you here, we're going to go ahead and just keep the, these test results private. No, he does not go like this. He opens his mouth and he asks for the sunglasses. All right, so those of you that went like this and those of you that saw him at the table do that, uh, think about it a little bit. And for those referees, the guy that said he wears a ref jersey, I like his response too, though. Once again, he was the overachiever. But hockey is one of those sports that takes a lot of dedication. It takes dedication from beginning to end. It takes the smarts, and that's kind of the fun part about having some arguments with people about the game of hockey. It, it, baseball, football, basketball, everything is so entrenched in our everyday fabric that it's amazing to me how hockey continues to be kind of the back burner. And most recently this past week, uh, and some of you might have heard it, some of you might have read it. We got into a good little uh, scrambling match, if you will, with some of the local media, some of us on the quote-unquote hockey side as it was presented, kind of uh, battling the good fight for hockey. Well, I wish most of those people that are either on the air or writing for newspapers would be here for one of these events just to see and hear the stories of the hard work and dedication that goes into it. I think it also is amazing that it would surprise them to know just the continued success that all of your hard work, all of our honorees and all of their families and all that dedication is paying off in leaps and bounds. And here are just a few examples. First off on the junior level, the St. Louis Bandits who just won their first round series coming back from being down two games to none, they're trying to win their fourth consecutive NAHL title. I mean, that's, that's fantastic, and they're here in St. Louis. Three straight titles. They're in the playoffs for the fourth. They need to win one more series uh, to, to get to the finals there. There were five St. Louis kids, John Ramage, Michael Davies, Sean Dolan, playing for Wisconsin, three of them in the championship game of the Frozen Four. Chris Saraceno played for RIT. 
Chris Weidman played for Miami. Five St. Louis kids represented the city of St. Louis in the Frozen Four this past week. That's outstanding. And we'll continue to beat the drum to make sure that it gets the coverage that it's due. Lindsey Middlebrooks, under 18 Central States team, won the national championships. Just recently, Dave Garth, who is the coach of the Afton under 12 Central States team, they won a national championship. And the Junior Blues are national champions, of course, coached by Jack Bean and Doc Runko. So, I mean, we're talking some serious strides here. Congratulations to you all on those. It continues to grow. Cam Jansen playing for the St. Louis Blues. Ben Bishop, you know, playing in the Blues organization. Mike McKenna, amongst others that, that are out there. It's it, it, Chris Butler. You know, they're starting to reach the highest level of hockey, and St. Louis hockey is on the map because of everything that you all have done, not just the most recent years. What's the success of now couldn't have happened without the decades of work that has been put together for this. I'd like to introduce to you uh, uh, some people that are here tonight real quickly. First, I'd like to recognize the Blues alums that are here. Uh, we've got, of course, my partner, Kelly Chase. We'll hear from him in just a moment. But Mark Reeds is here, Rick Wilson and Bobby Plager, of course, along with Bruce Affleck. We have the past St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame inductee members that are here. I'll run through the list of names for you. Some of you are sitting with them. Dave Bates, Jerry Burt, Charlie Busenhart, Frank Ferrara, Jack Hinterser, Jim Joe Sr., Herman Kriegshauser, Bob McElroy, Don Morehouse, Mark Smith, Bud Stege, and Lou Struckman. Congratulations to all of you. I was, I was talking with Mr. Morehouse prior to the gathering here for dinner tonight and uh, you gave me one heck of a, a stat too. I just mentioned about the five kids playing in the Frozen Four. Well of course Denver has quite a program under uh, their head coach George Guazdecki. Within the next three years three of the six defensemen that'll, playing for, that'll be playing for Denver will be from the city of St. Louis. So continued progress on that front as well. A very special guest I want to introduce uh, to you uh, before we get into uh, some of the other presentations tonight. I was introduced to this young man this past summer when we were doing a hockey show. He told me the story, it was absolutely phenomenal. We followed him all the way through. And we just most recently had him not only on our broadcast, but he actually was on the ice and was in between the pipes taking a few shots from Blues Hall of Famer Al McKinnis. He participated in the 2010 Vancouver Winter Paralympics Games. His team won the gold medal. He was the goaltender for that team. Right after the Olympics were done in Vancouver, the Paralympics began. Well, Steve Cash is a St. Louis and he lives in Overland. He is the goaltender for Team USA. He is here tonight. He's got the medal with him. Steve, where are you? Stand up for me, young man. There he is, right there in the back, in the white shirt. Go ahead, put that thing on, you earned it. I'm going to brag about you for a minute, Steve. Tell you a quick story. So Steve, who has a prosthetic leg, still playing roller hockey because he loves the sport of hockey. Somebody comes up to him and says, have you thought of playing sled hockey? So they get him into sled hockey. In a tournament, the coach of the national team sees Steve play, invites him to try out for the team. Not only does he try out, he makes it. He ends up backstopping them to world championships. He ends up not even giving up a goal in this past Olympic Games. Not a goal in helping Team USA to the gold medal. The best part about it though, is and I think that story from beginning to end is phenomenal as it is, when we just had him on the air the other night, they've got tryouts coming up for the national team again and he says, I've gotta go back and earn my spot again. So here's a young man that says, yep, I've done it once, but I'm not taking anything for granted. I wanna go earn it again. So congratulations, Steve, and good luck.